first scripture reading this morning comes from the Hebrew Testament of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me, Isabel Moses. From among your own people you shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to him, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words of the prophet shall speak in my name. I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. Our psalm is from Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. In the company of the upright, in the congregation, great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works, in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Our reading from the New Testament is from the epistle, the first letter to the church in Corinth. Chapter 8, verses 1 to 13. So this is what Paul writes to the Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though, there may, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords practiced by many people, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things, and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do eat or if we do not eat. But take think, care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. Following this is our gospel reading by George Beatty of Rockton United. 